In the past month or so, I've had a lot of really random sourcing opportunities and I've been stockpiling a lot of inventory and I'm finally ready. I've got some time set aside to film a haul and I'm excited to share it with you. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park. I'm a part-time reseller on a variety of reselling platforms and I like to get my inventory at a lot of different places. Sometimes I'll buy out other resellers inventory if they no longer want to resell. Sometimes I will go, you know, to typical places like thrift stores and consignment stores um, but I do also stumble upon estate sales or garage sales with some great clothing to resell on you know reselling platforms like Poshmark, eBay, Mercari and so I'm really excited to share with you just kind of a random mix of stuff that I got today. I'm mainly going to show you pieces from three different sources. One is an estate sale. One is a local consignment store that I like to go to often. And then just stuff that I got at a Goodwill when I popped in for like 20 minutes one day. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the estate sale items because I got some cool pieces. And actually I went to the estate sale twice. I went on the very first day I was in line. You know, I wanted to see what they had first before anyone else did. And the items that I got the first day were probably the best items and I did create a reel on Instagram so I will post that here. I have always admired this house so when I saw that they were having an estate sale I knew I had to go. I found these Rothy's for three dollars and then this was a Scott McClintock or Jessica McClintock gunny sacks dress. The Scott McClintock kind of threw me and it was pretty um, stain ridden as you'll see later in the haul. This is one of the few things that I did get the first day that you'll see in today's haul video. This was a J. McLaughlin open cardigan sweater, but it did have a hole in the armpit that I didn't notice until I was photographing it. So that's a little bit of a dud, I would say. This is a St. John skirt that I believe I have listed. This is a Tadashi Shoji dress, which typically I am not in the business of picking up, especially if I have to pay a lot for it, but I thought it was pretty beautiful and it was a size 10 so I grabbed it. This is St. John Collection. This also had a flaw in that um, it was missing kind of like the hook and eye loop closure that closes the front. I still have it listed for $150 though. This is Armani Collezioni 100% silk. Um, I think that this had maybe a spot or two on it as well and I don't expect that to sell very quickly but you know there you go. And then this Patagonia it was only $5. It also had some stains on the sleeve but they won't be difficult to wash out and this is the perfect thing to list for the fall. But there were a few pieces that I got the second day as well. These were pieces mainly that I had seen the first day of the estate sale and I was like price wise this is just too much right now but hopefully you know these things will still be here the second day and I'll be able to get them for half off. The one piece that I wasn't able to score the second day because it had sold during you know the full price period was this huge vintage coach bag. It was like you could put your laptop and stuff in it. I think it was a men's bag, but it did have a lot of wear on it. And they were asking $40 and I probably could have conditioned it and brought it back to life to some degree. I'm just way too overwhelmed with inventory though to be taking on pieces that are projects. Like I cannot be in the business right now of rehabilitating pieces and bringing them back to life. I do not have the space or the energy or the time to do that. So I think I did the right thing. Didn't pick it up at full price. If it were half off, I could have maybe even used it for myself, but it wasn't worth the $40 that they were asking. But let me show you what I did pick up. Um, I will start with this. This is a black leather bag. It's like a nice little crossbody bag. The leather is actually so super soft and I really liked these like gold, I, I, the lighting's kind of weird, but I do think it's gold. It's like this gold um, detail, it's on the front, it's on the back. There's kind of like studding almost. It's not really studding, it's like, I don't know, would you call it grommets? I don't know, but there's these things throughout and there's also, ugh, I cannot remember words right now, but the feet, is that what you call it, on the bottom of the bag so that if you place it down on the floor, it rests on these versus on the bag itself. The brand is, I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, Scoggin. They, I believe, are well known for making wallets. Like I've seen a lot of wallets by this brand. I've not seen a lot of bags, um, just or clothing or accessories in general. So Skagen is a Denmark brand. I don't know if it was made in Denmark, but it's Skagen Denmark. Let's see where it was made. It's cowhide exterior and the inside is super clean. The lining looks really good. 
Um, okay, it doesn't really matter where it was made, but it does have like this zippered pocket on the inside. It's just a neutral gray lining. And I picked this up for $11.25. That was the half off price. I believe these were selling around like 50 ish dollars. I've just never tried anything by this brand, so I just thought I'd see how it does. There is a little bit of just like little wear or like you can see like on the leather, just like slight discolorations here and there, but overall it's in really great shape. It's a really good size for a bag. And honestly, I might just lift it, list it kind of high and if it doesn't do well, I might keep it myself, I don't know. But I thought that was a really cool piece. Kind of staying in the black leather trend and the trend of like me picking up stuff that I know nothing about. This was wild. So I saw these the first day and I was like, um, I kind of want those. They are leather chaps for like horse riders. It's like an equestrian thing. Um, I'm pretty sure this is more equestrian than it is like motorcycle riding. I could be so wrong though, because I literally know 0% about chaps. I know nothing about them. So it does have a monogram here, which I don't think is like a huge deal. It has this buckle back here and it has on the inside a label that I cannot read. It's so faint. It's kind of like engraved onto this little leather piece. And people suggested, because I did show this on Instagram, people suggested that I take a piece of paper and like a pencil ooh, and just kind of like, you know, lightly um, kind of color over it to see if I can make out the indentation. And I tried that and I could not. And there were some other suggestions. So I'll have to look back at my Instagram post at the really wonderful comments that people left. But I don't know, this is one of those things like I probably shouldn't have picked it up because I know nothing about this stuff and I get really overwhelmed when I have to spend a lot of time researching something. Um, and they were asking $60 for this, which was a lot and that's why I waited till the half off day. I like the brown trim too, by the way. That's why I kind of think it's more equestrian than it is like motorcycle because I don't know, I feel like the coloring on this is so, I don't know, but um, yeah, I just don't know anything about it and it's gonna take me a while to get these listed. Also, like how do you photograph something like this? Like I just, I don't know. And they're in really, really great shape. There is some wear on the inside, even a little bit on the outside. I think that this dirt here will wipe right off, but you can see like a little bit of the wear on the inside. I just thought they were so, so, so cool though. I'm also like not looking forward to having to figure out what the size is on these. I just have to do a lot of research about something that I know absolutely nothing about. So was this $30 gamble worth it? I don't know, you tell me. And if you know anything about selling chaps, measuring chaps, finding out the brand name to chaps, any of the information about the chaps, oh my gosh, I would be so indebted to you if you would leave me any information down in the comments below because I am stressing out a little bit. I know nothing about this. Um, I also picked up Another kind of out of character piece for me. This is by the brand Ann Crimmins for Umi Collections. So first of all, I'm pretty sure that this is vintage. Um, and I picked it up for two reasons. I don't like to deal with vintage because I don't know a lot about it, but I picked it up for two reasons. One, um, it is made of 100% silk. It's a size 10. And two, I like the print. I don't know, I thought the print was really fun. Um, I do feel like this is probably one of those items that I will have to hold on to for a while, but it's just this like kind of layered dress. You can see it's, I feel like it's supposed to have the look of like this top piece being a jacket and then this bottom piece being a skirt, but it's actually just one piece and it's got like little layers. Um, I don't know. I just... <laughs> I just wanted to try it. And I paid, let's see, they had it priced at $12.50, so I paid $6.25. I thought that was a good price for a 100% silk piece. It does have shoulder pads as I'm feeling them. Yeah, we'll see what happens with that. I did look up comps and there were a few. I don't remember off the top of my head because it's been like two weeks now since they went to this estate sale, but I think that I should be able to list this for at least 50, if not more. All right, next up, this is another piece. I, I mean, I think this will be a little bit easier to list, but again, I know nothing about this. This is a suede Western vest. They had it priced at $24.50, so I paid $12.25 for it. I mean, this is just like one big piece of leather. You know what I mean? This is like suede. It's just, it's just one solid piece um, and you can see kind of the weaving here to put the pieces together. There's all this fringe down here. 
Um, I don't know how much something like this goes for. I'm going to find out. I'm going to do some research and oh no, I'm noticing a flaw right now. So this, as you can see, kind of came undone. I will have to photograph that. I surely don't know how to fix it because that's not one of my strengths. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Again, was this $12.25 gamble worth it? I have no idea. I just thought it was really cool. So I thought I'd pick it up. The last thing that I'll show you from this estate sale. And like I said, the first day I got a lot more stuff and this was just second day stuff. This is another gamble um, for a number of reasons. One, again, it's vintage. Two, it's something that I don't know a lot about. And three, there's a lot of stains on this, but um, they had it priced at $7.50. So this is a Gunny Sacks piece, but it's weird because it says Scott McClintock and then it says Gunny Sacks by Jessica McClintock. So it's just like a little bit confusing. Um, this is an A size 14 made in the USA. I'm going to stand to show you this one. So this one does have like prairie girl vibes to it. But I don't think it's necessarily as cute or as beautiful as the type of gunny sacks pieces with like a lot of the crochet lace detail that, you know, goes for like two, three hundred dollars. Um, this is literally all just plain white. Just at the look of it, I think it's linen. But let me um, see if there is a care tag. There is some detail that is really beautiful. Like you can see right here, all this crochet lace detail, but there are also a lot of stains. Like you can see right here, I don't know what this person spilled, but somebody spilled something. Um, and there's quite a few stains. So the question is, do I take the time to try to get it cleaned up? Which honestly, I probably, don't think that I will do I you know maybe even take it to a dry cleaner or something or do I just sell it as is and to be honest with you I think I will just sell it as is um, oh this is made of 53% Raimi 47% cotton and it does say dry clean so I don't know I just thought it was interesting um, yeah there's another huge stain on the back I was able to price it cheap enough that I think I can just sell it as is, get a little bit less for it, but, um, you know, make some decent money on it. And I think I'm fine with that. So we'll see what happens. So that's stuff from the first place that I wanted to show you. And then let's get into some shoes from Goodwill. So I think yesterday I stopped in at my local Goodwill. I hadn't been there in like months. Like, I don't know. I just don't go to my local Goodwills very much anymore because they're overpriced. Sometimes I go in and I don't find anything um, because the selection's not very great. So I just wanted to see what they had. I was kind of in the area and I forgot too that on Fridays it is 20% off. They have like a coupon and I think it's because it's kind of the end of that color sale. So, you know, a lot of Goodwills will have a tag, like a color tag that's 50% off. And I think they start that Monday. So by the time it gets to Friday, a lot of that stuff has been picked over. They're really trying to just kind of get rid of stuff. Um, so I popped in. The cashier reminded me that it was the 20% off coupon, which was really, really nice of him. And I got a few things. So the first pair of shoes that I found are these. Oh, my gosh. Oh, you scared me. What's up? A few moments later. Sorry, my husband came down and like scared the crap out of me. Okay, so I found this pair of shoes. The brand is Bed Stew, which I have actually never found before. And I didn't even know that they made men's stuff. I thought it was only women's like boots and bags and things like that. But these are obviously men's or like a lace up Oxford. They wanted $16.99 for them, but they were yellow tag, which was the color of the week. Um, there you go, $16.99. And so it was half off. Plus I got 20% off because of that coupon. So for these, I got these for $11.33, it looks like, which is not bad. And when I looked up comps, it looked like they were going for around like $40 to $50. Comps were honestly a little bit all over the place. And then I got this pair of boots. And honestly, on the surface, I was like, oh, these are probably going to be whatever. Um, these are a pair of Sam Edelman boots and they're in like this light brown color. The thing that I like about Sam Edelman shoes in general is that they will tell you the style name on the inside. So this one, actually, they had it on like the tag. There was a tag on the inside. So these are the Penny 2 these are in a six and a half leather upper. There is a little bit of wear on the inside, like along the zipper, but these um, are reselling for like 70 
five-ish dollars consistently, which I thought was insane because they didn't really look like much. So, you know, this is what they look like. I didn't think anything was super special about them, but they were $12.99, but again, yellow tag. So I got these for $5.56 because of like the coupon and all that good stuff, which actually, am I looking at this correct? I don't know. In total for the two pairs of shoes, I paid $16.88. I don't know how it worked, but I think these were $5.56. The other were $11.33. And that makes sense together. That makes $16.88. I, I'm pretty happy. So, you know, if everything goes well between the two of these shoes, I should be able to make like $125 in gross sales and I spent $17 on them. So turning 17 into 125, not bad. Obviously there's fees and stuff like that that you have to take into consideration, but I'll take it. So I only got these two pairs of shoes at Goodwill. However, while I was looking at like the regular part of shoes, so not boutique shoes, these two were actually boutique shoes. But when I was looking at like the regular wall of shoes that were just regular priced, um, there was a woman and she stopped me. She like kind of patted me and she's like, hey, I need your opinion. She said, what color would you call these shoes? And she was holding up these Asics. Um, and she's like, my favorite color is fuchsia or like hot pink, do you think these are that? And I was like, I mean, I think they're a little bit darker of a pink, but they're really cute, like you should get them. And she's like, yeah, they're almost new and they are priced so well. I think they were priced like $7.99 and I was like, absolutely. And then she was just really excited. You could tell like she just was very friendly and wanted to talk to people. So she was like showing me the things in her cart and she pulled out this pair of noble shoes. And she was like, look at how much they had these for. They had them priced at $2.99. I like almost wept. I almost wanted to be like, ma'am, can I just buy those off of you? Like, can I give you $10 for those? I've never found Noble shoes before. I've never seen them in the flesh. This was my first time seeing them in person. I've never found them before. Desperate to list them and sell them myself just to kind of see what they're like. It's people say that they are great shoes. Um, but she got there first. And so I was like, wow, what a score. And she just had found some really, really great pieces. And I kind of noticed like she had a bunch of shoes, a lot of which were like a ton of different sizes. There was like this pair of Sam Edelman shoes that she had found some really, really great sandals. And she was like, yeah, I'm just getting these to um, consign. And I think she consigns at one of the consignment stores that I go to. And she's like, I'm getting it for so little and I'm gonna be able to sell it for so much. Like they're gonna give me such a big payout. And I was like, wow, look at this woman out here hustling too. Like her style of reselling is very different from mine. And she was like a much older lady. She was, she, you could tell she had like back issues and she even said like, you know, I have some back issues, but today's a good day. I think she had like just taken medicine and was like really feeling it. But she kind of had like, um, you know, like a hunch in her back and wasn't able to like fully straighten up, but she was out here like figuring out how to make money, reselling clothes, buying low at Goodwill and finding the random things like noble shoes that were priced at $2.99 and finding ways to sell them high, which, you know, like I was very envious of the fact that she got to the noble shoes first, although I think those were for herself, but, um, I was just so happy for her, like so cool that this is something that she was doing. Um, and even though like I live in a small town, we have two Goodwills here and like a couple other thrift stores, but there really is enough for everyone to go around. So even though she got those shoes, I still got some really great ones. Um, everyone's happy. Everyone has their own business style and I don't know, I'm here for it. I love the fact that she was so excited to show me what she found. And it's not like she was like, oh my gosh, it's Becky Park. Like she had no idea who I was. She clearly wasn't reselling by listing stuff online. She just would buy stuff low and take them to her local consignment stores. And I thought that was really cool. I bet I bought stuff that she bought at Goodwill, brought to consignment stores, and then I bought them at consignment stores and she made a little bit of money off of me. So it's just so funny how that works. And then the last thing that I'll show you, and you might be like, but there's all this other stuff. Well, you can't really see it, I guess, on the screen, but I'm gonna be filming another haul today of stuff that I got at this amazing garage sale. So if you wanna make sure that you don't miss that haul video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I do upload haul videos, what sold videos, tips and tricks videos, all of the things.
things for all of the resellers. And since you're subscribing, you may as well like the video too, because that lets YouTube know, hey, this is a good video to suggest to people who are into reselling. But the last pieces of this haul is actually the biggest chunk, I would say. And this is all stuff that I got at a local consignment store right next to where my kids do gymnastics is a consignment store. And every time I take my kids to gymnastics, which I think is literally every single day of the week, except for Saturday, um, I will drive by the consignment store and see if they're running a sale because they usually do have some kind of sale running, but sometimes it's like 25% off of one color. But this day it happened to be 75% off. So I definitely stopped in because that's a pretty good sale. So uh, it's a lot of bread and butter from this place, but some decent stuff too. So I'll start with the bottoms. I got a lot of bottoms and a lot of these are already listed. This is a pair of pants by Cut Loose and it's in a size small. These are made of a linen blend and they're in this dark gray color. They're kind of like a lantern pant. I think that's how they were described. Very log and look. You just pull them on. They're super comfy. They're a high rise. I have these listed already. I don't remember how much I listed them for. I will put a picture of the listing right here, but I am hoping that those do pretty well. This is exciting. I found out about a new pair of pants and I don't remember how much any of these things were because they're already listed. I already took the tags off of them, but um, you know, most things came out to $5 or less. I think my average cost of goods was around $4 for this particular trip. Um, so I was excited because I found out about a new brand and the reason I even like stopped to look up comps for this brand was because they had them priced kind of high. I think they had them priced at this consignment store originally for like $40, $50, which they don't do that for a lot of their stuff. Most of their stuff is kind of priced in that like $20 to $30 range, unless it's stuff that we know is pretty expensive. Um, so I did take a moment to look this up and the brand is Kieran Finch. They had two pairs of pants by this brand. Um, they were a little bit different. These were made of a cotton spandex blend. They're in a women's 22, which is great. And from what I can gather, they are a women's brand that is very menswear inspired. So a little bit more like androgynous of a look, which is kind of cool. And again, I'll show you the listing right here. So these ones I probably paid the most for. I think I paid maybe around like $7.50 or $8. Um, this is another pair. This is the one that I saw first, um, and all it said was like made in Italy along the inside. And I was like, okay, but <laughs> like things can be made in Italy and still not be worth very much. And then I found this label and this is what led me to look it up. These are made of 100% wool, again, made in Italy, size 22. I think the other pair were actually made in the United States. And again, they're just like trousers. These had a style name to them. I don't remember off the top of my head what that style name was, um, but because these were made of wool and because of that style name and because I was able to look up very specific comps for that specific pair of pants, I did price these, I think, a little bit higher than that first pair. And I don't know. It was exciting to learn about a new brand. I don't feel like I've had a lot of interest in them yet. I don't think there's been like a lot of likes or anything, but hopefully they'll sell pretty quickly for close to my asking price. Now, I had talked about in a What Sold video the fact that I was so disappointed with this pair of jeans or this brand of jeans because I have heard resellers talk about it so much and everyone in the comments was like, duh, you got the wrong style of those jeans. The brand is Democracy. I had picked up a regular schmegular pair of jeans by them. They were cute. I think they have like embroidery and stuff, but they did not have the ab technology, which is what everyone, I guess, freaks out over. I think it's the ab technology that really stands out when it comes to this brand. This is in a size six, and these are a pair of cargo pants. Um, you can see like there's pockets here, there's pockets here on the side, and they're just kind of like a straight leg pant. Now, what I didn't notice until I got them home, and again, I made sure to, you know, take pictures and stuff, is that there is a flaw. It's right here. It's kind of like, it looks like it got snagged on something maybe, which is funny because like, that's what pants look like when they're factory distressed, but there's no other distressed spot on this pair of pants. So I'm assuming that that's a flaw. That was not put there to have this one little random spot of, you know, distressed detail on the back near the butt like that. That doesn't make sense. So I'm pretty sure that is something that somebody did bad things to this pants in and 
I just disclosed it, dropped the price a little bit, and I'll show you that listing right here. There was a lot of Talbots. You guys know that Talbots is one of my favorite brands to pick up. It's one of my favorite bread and butter brands, and it generally does really well for me, but I think it does well for me because I know what to pick up in the brand. I know not to pick up like basic shirts, basic blouses. Most of their tops I honestly leave behind, and a lot of their pants I leave behind too, unless I'm picking them up for like a dollar or something, which I knew wasn't going to be the case today. But I did pick these up for a couple reasons. Um, so this is the Talbot's slim ankle jean. I picked them up because they're in a size 18 W bigger sizes just generally sell better, but especially so in Talbot's, I would say, because a lot of Talbot's that you find secondhand is in the smaller sizes. So this was a great size. It's also like just kind of a little bit more modern of a style. Like, yes, it's a slim jean, but it's high waisted. It's um, a little bit cropped, and I like the color too. I like the lighter wash. I think I have these listed for 35, and I'm hoping that these sell for close to that amount. Plus size Talbots generally does really, really well for me. This is another pair of the Democracy Ab Technology jeans, and these are actually jeans. These are also in a size six, so they probably came from the same exact person. And I would say these are more of like a skinny, maybe like a slim jean. They're cuffed on the bottom. I just wanted to see what the big deal was about now that I have the correct, you know, style of de democracy. So if you want to see how those end up doing for me for real, again, don't forget to subscribe because hopefully they'll be showing up in a What Sold video soon. They also had this pair of Good American jeans. I don't know. Like, let me know how Good American's doing for you. I do feel like my Good American is definitely sitting. These are the Good Leg jeans, and these are in a size 6. Yeah. They are... I feel like I didn't put the color in the listing because I just... I was like, is it black or is it super, 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 super dark blue? I think they're black and like I'm wearing black shorts right now and that's usually how you can tell and they're not the same as this but I don't know I feel like they just look like a more faded black like these are almost more of like a gray I don't know so I just didn't put the color because I didn't want to be wrong and <laughs> we'll see what happens um, these are distressed in the knee these are definitely more of like a skinny jean so not as popular of a style right now they're definitely not selling very quickly for me anymore skinny jeans but I think I still listed these around 50 and I'm hoping that they'll sell for close to that amount this is a pair of Levi's. This is the boyfriend in a size 20W. I don't know that I've tried selling this style. They're in a little bit darker of a wash, but I wanted to pick them up because they are in a bigger size. I always want to be size inclusive in my Poshmark closet, eBay store, um, and just make sure that regardless of what size you are, whether you're plus size or whether you're really small, you know, a lot of resellers just straight up don't pick up things that are in a size zero or double zero or in petite sizes, but I pick those things up too because I know how hard it is for me to shop as a petite woman, as a size zero, size two, and as someone who wears like a size four and a half or five in shoes, like I can wear a children's too. Um, it's so hard to find things because people don't want to sell things that I can fit into, which is kind of sad. Um, so I like to have all of the sizes. This is another Talbot's piece. Um, I picked this up because I thought it was so stinking cute. It's a size four. It's this like very kind of December-y, holiday-y skirt with like the red plaid. And I love the scallop detail at the bottom. I just thought it was very, very darling. And it's got, no, oh, is it? I think you can like undo, no. Nah, yeah, you can undo the threading. Um, right now it's still threaded through, but you can undo that to have some pockets. Just that it was super classic. It's made of a wool blend. Um, man, this would just look so classy with like a black tank top tucked into it. Ugh, but yeah, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. I recently sold a skirt by the brand Tail Athletic and it sold for $35. It was like a squirt. It was um, a golf or tennis squirt. And people were kind of surprised. They're like, oh, wow, I didn't think that that brand sold for very much. But I wasn't surprised because that's kind of what comps had indicated. So then I saw 
these three pieces and they were priced pretty low at this consignment store like originally they were priced at like $18 and then you know I got them for 75% off so I was like oh my gosh I've had such a great experience with this brand of course I'll pick it up however I don't think this is the same tail so this just says tail and maybe now that I think about it when people were leaving comments being like I can't believe you sold a tail skirt for that much maybe they were thinking about this one this is like tail tech I want to say yeah like this is another pair of shorts this it says tech underneath um these I don't think are worth as much so this is a pair of like brown Bermuda shorts I think these are also good for golf um I don't know if you're the type of person that likes to wear Bermuda shorts to the office or something they're very classy looking they're in a size 10 and then I got these which are gray these are in a size 10 as well, I want to say. And I got one more pair. These are black. And these are a little bit different in that, like, there's a back kind of stretchy elastic panel, size 10. These also say tail tech on them. I don't think this is the same tail as the skirt that I sold because the label does look very different so i think i could only end up listing these for around like 20 dollars if i'm not mistaken which is just like a tiny bit more than what my consignment store had them going for um and that's my mistake for like not really doing good comping and good research while i was at the consignment store but also like when they were running the sale, what they did was they put all of their clothing items that were 75% off on racks. They wheeled the racks outside and that way it wasn't taking up space inside their store. The issue is that there was a heat index and I think it felt like 108 degrees outside. So basically the second I stepped out of my car, I was already sweating <laughs> and I went through like the pants and stuff outside first. I think um, I also went through dresses. I don't even think I bothered looking at shirts really because it was too hot. I just, I couldn't really take it so I'll show you some of the dresses and a few more pairs of pants that I got here in a second um, and I'll show you some shoes as well the shoes thankfully were inside the store but it was so hot I didn't know if I was gonna make it outside so I got what I could and then I went inside all right so I did get a few pairs of shoes at this consignment store as well thankfully those were like I said on the inside these, these are not cute but they're by a brand that I have really good luck with and that brand is fit flop um, it says it on the inside. These are a seven and a half. These almost look like water shoes. You know what I mean? It looks like those shoes that you wear and you go in the ocean in them. I don't really know what the purpose of these are, but I did list them already. Yeah, there's just kind of like the, it looks like a sock on top. Um, it says fit flop there too. I don't remember how much I listed these for, but I will show them to you here. Um, and then these, I have pretty good luck with this brand. The brand is is it Reeker or is it Riker? It's one of those. And I believe that this is an English brand. Um, these are in a size 42. And, you know, usually these shoes are very similar in style to this, but I've never seen a floral pair like this. So I was very intrigued and I like the fact that they were in a much bigger size. They were kind of dirty, as you can see. Like these are kind of like almost gray versus what used to be white, I'm sure did not want to take the time to clean them. I'm sure I could have gotten a magic eraser and like scrub them, but from my experience, like I don't think shoes sell for that much more when I take the time to clean them. And maybe that says more about the kinds of shoes I'm finding than it is whether they're clean or dirty. I don't know. The last pair of shoes that I got at this consignment store, are these not amazing? Like it's not the season to be listing this kind of stuff, which is why this stuff was, you know, on sale, but like, holy friggin cow it's like this straw woven I, I guess this is a flower yeah like floral upper f slide it's by jeffrey campbell and i think that this exact style was sold at anthropology it's so stunning it's so beautiful it's a raffia upper it says leather lining and sock handmade made in india u.s size nine Oh my gosh, I just thought they were so stunning. So these are listed. Um, and the last things that I'll show you are also from the consignment store. Um, just like some pants and some dresses. Again, I don't really think I have like tops. I don't even remember. Okay, so this is RSVP by Talbots. These were in a size two, which to be honest is my size. And I'm like, do I need pants like these? I don't, I don't 
think I do, but like, do I for, for work? Even though I wear like distressed jeans to work. So these I have not listed yet. I haven't photographed them. So these they had listed for $19.99. So I got them for probably like around, you know, 250 or something like that three bucks um i don't know i think these are so cute i'll probably list these for around like 30 ish dollars if i don't keep them myself i have no reason to keep them i really shouldn't but i will probably sit on them for a little bit of time because one it's not really the season for pants like these and two they are in a smaller size but i didn't even care i was like they're just so pretty i need to bring them home with me this is a pair of gingham pants also, I think by Talbot's, yep, these are Talbot's Petite, but they're a size 14 Petite, which I was happy about. Also priced at $19.99, um, and these are like an ankle length, more of like a capri pair of pants. Perfect for the office. I'll probably list these around $30 as well. And then I had this pair of pants. I don't remember. Oh, I think this was, oh, okay. So this brand is so miss for me usually. The brand is COS, I don't even know how to say it, COS, COS. These are in a European size 44, just 100% polyester. They had these priced at $20 as well, which is the only reason I got them. They're kind of like a super lightweight, like they kind of have the appearance of linen, but they're not, they're cuffed. Just a nice pair of trousers in a really nice neutral beige color. Um, so these are a great like capsule wardrobe, minimalist pair of pants. I just, I, I have not really ever sold this brand for a whole lot, even though it is pretty expensive retail. But we will end our haul with a few dresses. This one is a jumpsuit and it's Lily Pulitzer Target. It's in a size extra small. Again, part of me is like, do I want this? But I don't know. One, I think it's too long for me because remember I'm like freakishly short. So realistically it would go like this. Yeah, I have to wear heels with these and I basically plan every outfit around how can I not wear heels today <laughs> because I don't want to wear heels. So I will probably list that. It's not the right season for it, but also people are going on cruises and stuff like that. So who knows? Um, this was quite the dud. So at first I was really excited about this because this is J. Jill and it's a size 1X. J. Jill is such a great bread and butter brand for me. It actually sells for a pretty decent amount of money, um, especially again in the bigger sizes. It can just do really well. And this is made of 100% viscose rayon. So it's a longer dress and it's got this collar on it. It's got buttons all the way up and down. So it's probably a maxi dress on most people. That being said, this is why it's a dud. On the back, as I was photographing it, I noticed this giant hole. And it's very obvious what happened. If you look at the area around the hole, you can see that because this was so long, it got caught under the rack at the store and they kind of dragged over the bottom of this dress. And that's why that happened. I'm still gonna list it, but I'm listing it for so, so, so very cheap because of the flaw, obviously. Um, next up is kind of, I, I don't know if I needed to pick it up. I just thought it was really cute. And I kind of thought it had like Y2K vibes, you tell me. But the brand is Polly, which I think is kind of whatever. It's a size eight. One, I like the color of the dress because I feel like the color is super in. It's like this sage green, but then I felt like the look of it was very Y2K. So I'm thinking that this is gonna sell on like Depop or something. Um, we'll see what happens. By the way, I talked about this on my Instagram, but I had um, this pair of boots that I listed. They were like a whatever brand. The brand was just called Forever, not Forever 21, but you could tell it was like a boutique brand. And it was this pair of like ankle boots with like a lug sole. And they had this, um, what is that call? This thing, not a collar, cause it was a pair of boots, like a strap with rhinestones on it. And for whatever reason, Depop decided to put it in their like featured, I don't know, like right on the home page, there's stuff that they like picked out as like special. So it was on their like home page and people saw it right when they opened the app. 
I got over a hundred likes on this pair of boots and I was like, what is happening? Why are so many people liking this pair of boots? And then I figured it out. Um, and they did actually sell within like three or four days of being listed and being on that front, you know, page of Depop's app, they sold for my full asking price of $40. That was with me paying for shipping, but still they were a whatever brand. And I was like, okay, so sometimes style is enough to sell something for a decent amount and to sell it quickly. And hopefully that's what's gonna happen with this poly dress. This is definitely more function than anything else. This is by the brand Crag Hoppers, which is like an outdoor brand. It doesn't go for a whole lot, but I got it because it's just very neutral um, and it has insect shield, which apparently is supposed to prevent you from being attacked by insects. I don't know. I did like this kind of pleating here. I felt like the way that it is, everything kind of centers at the center. I thought that that would be very flattering. Um, this isn't a size six. It's very lightweight and it's like this light grayish color. However, I am missing the belt. So <laughs> that's not awesome. And it, like I said, just doesn't retail for a lot to begin with. I think they probably had it priced at like 17 or $20. So it's not like I was paying a whole lot for it, but I probably didn't need to pick that up. And then finally, man, this one was a pain to photograph. It's a dress by Zara. It's in a size large. Zara is very hit or miss, but I do feel like this kind of like, I don't know, this is like a highlighter green, I would say. And I do feel like these kinds of colors are a little bit trendy right now. Um, it's like a halter dress. There's all this ruching along the sides. So there's just a lot going on. It's, you know, the color, the style is a little Y2K to me. And I don't know, I didn't look to see like, is it a blogger favorite? Is it something that, you know, is going for an insane amount that it shouldn't be going for? I just saw it, I liked it. I didn't want to look at comps while I was in the sun. Like honestly, what I did was I had like an armful of stuff. I would bring it in and be like, I'm just gonna get this stuff. I would put it on the counter so that they could start taking the tags off. I didn't wanna like take the time and I didn't have the time to look through everything that I had pulled to look up comps and stuff. That's just kind of how I shop. I know it's not the best way. I don't advise you to shop like me, but I think I've been doing this enough to know like these are the risks I'm willing to take. And if something sells for a little bit less than I wanted it to sell for, it's like, it's not the majority of the items that I'm picking up. So I'm okay with it. And I'd rather use the time to find more stuff than to look up comps for everything. So that's just my philosophy and how I do things. Don't necessarily do it just because I do. So that is my random smorgasbord of a haul for you. Just, you know, stuff from all over the place, lots of different styles and uh, I don't know, just things that, um, this is probably my most random haul ever. So thanks for being a part of it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and I will see you guys in the next one. And if you're like, man, I just want to watch more hauls from Becky. I got you. I got a playlist right here of just hauls. So if you want to binge watch and let me keep you company while you photograph or list, I am happy to do it. So thank you guys so much for hanging out and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.